this is a tutorial about pelvic floor muscle function and dysfunction. The pelvic floor is positioned at the base of the pelvis. Inserted anteriorly to the pubic bone, posteriorly to the coccyx, and laterally to the lower pelvic bones. If you look inside the pelvis, with the pubic bone at the bottom of the picture and the sacrum at the top, you can see that the pelvic floor muscles form the floor of the lower pelvic cavity. The pelvic floor consists of three different layers, mainly muscular tissue, but also fibrous structure, like the endopelvic fascia, and connective tissues, which are part of the pelvic floor. The deep layer of the pelvic floor muscles comprise levator ani, consisting of puborectalis, pubococcygeus, iliococcygeus, and coccygeus. Also present in the pelvic cavity, but not belonging to the pelvic floor muscles, are piriformis and obturator internus. In this picture, the pubic bone is at the top and the sacrum at the bottom. Now we'll look at the urogenital diaphragm. You can see that the urethra, vagina, and anal canal are passing through the pelvic floor muscles. The middle layer consists of the external urethral sphincter, contributing to urethral closure, and the deep transverse perineal muscle stabilizing the perineum. A major part of this layer contains connective tissue. The superficial layer consists of superficial transverse, of external anal sphincter contributing to anal closure, of bulbospongiosis and ischiocavernosis, both playing an important role in female and male sexuality. One function of the pelvic floor is to support pelvic organs. Pelvic floor muscle tone depends on its active and passive components at rest. The tone of the pelvic floor muscle can be normal, hyper, and hypotonic. If the pelvic floor muscle is hypertonic, its muscle contractile activity and or passive stiffness are increased. Muscle function as power, endurance, and relaxation may also be impaired, resulting in voiding problems, obstructed defecation, pelvic pain syndromes, and sexual dysfunctions. If the pelvic floor muscle is hypotonic, the contractile activity and or passive stiffness or decrease muscle function as power, endurance, and relaxation may also be impaired. This may cause symptoms as urinary and anal incontinence, pelvic organ prolapse, or sexual dysfunctions. A voluntary contraction of the pelvic floor means that, on demand, the pelvic floor muscle can be activated, resulting in an elevation of the perineum and a craniovental displacement of the pelvic organs. A pelvic floor muscle contraction can be absent, weak, normal, or strong. A contraction of the pelvic floor muscle is important in the closing mechanism of the urethra, vagina, and anal canal and is essential to maintain continence. Relaxation of the pelvic floor muscles mean that the perineum and pelvic organs return to at least their resting state. A voluntary relaxation can be absent, partial, or complete. If pelvic floor muscles do not relax when required, problems during bladder or bowel emptying or pain during sexual intercourse may occur. During straining, the pelvic floor muscles should relax, resulting in a downward movement of the pelvic floor. To resist abdominal pressure rise with a cough, pelvic floor muscles and the transverse abdominal muscles are taught to contract simultaneously 
leading to an activation of the pelvic floor to counteract the pressure and maintain continence. With a weak or absent pelvic floor muscle contraction during abdominal pressure rise, a downward movement of the pelvic floor occurs and may result in an opening of the urethra and the anal sphincter.